ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الرحمن والسلام عليه قال الله تعالى في القران العظيم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال تعالى ايضا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار we start as usual and as always by praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we seek his forgiveness and we seek his assistance we seek refuge with allah from the evil that resides within our own selves and th- and from the bad consequences of our own deeds whomsoever allah has guided there is no one who could lead that person astray and whomsoever allah has abandoned due to their own desire to be abandoned then no one can guide them after they have been left by allah to their own devices we bear witness that there is absolutely nothing worthy of worship besides allah he is wahda he is one unique in his oneness complete in his perfection and incomparable to his creation and we further bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is without a shadow of a doubt without a shadow of a doubt allah's last and final messenger akthiru salatu wa taslim words brothers i wanted to remind us a little bit about some words and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us words in, as a means to communicate with each other in varying languages and different patwas and different things that are spread out throughout the world allah has given us a huge diversity in language with words and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to speak to us in the arabic language in his kalam in his uncreated words his uncreated speech from the uncreated creator of all that is created jalla wa ala has given us words in the creation of the universe in the entire of the universe entirety of the universe allah has used but one word kun aya kun bi and it is the whole universe was spoken into existence by allah jalla wa ala only allah can do that you know when you see the people on different platforms and they say they're going to speak their success into existence if you i'm sure you've heard this and how funny it is to hear speaking things into existence is allah's realm only allah can do that and there are some phrases that are beloved to allah some phrases that are so easy to say that you've been saying them since you we were little kids little children you've been saying them i learned how to say them almost immediately when i took my shahada back in 96 brothers who've taken their shahada yesterday may know some of these words and might know even all of them but do we actually feel the weight of them and do we actually see the importance of these words what are these words of the malik you're giving us a lot about words what are they ab hafsa <coughs> subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illa allah wallahu akbar in wa had la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah Oh that again he's so boring 
He has to say that. Don't we know that already? Haven't we heard that since we were five years old? Haven't we heard that? SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Wa la hawla, Wa la quwwata illa billah, sure. We know all about that, Abu Hafsa. But do we? Do we actually know about these words? And I'm going to try my best, inshallah, in the next few minutes that we have, to give us a bit more of an understanding of these words, so that these words can be powerful for us. One of the attributes of these phrases, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, is that they are the most beloved words to Allah. And if I were to stop here, that would be it. If I were to say, Yaqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa wa lakum, that would be enough for you and I. That these words are beloved to Allah, that these are the most beloved words to Allah that we should know them and say them would be enough for me as a speaker and enough for you as someone who's listening that we would just end it right here. And we like to learn the beloved words of people, don't we? We'll go beyond the beyonds to learn the words of people, the words that people love to hear. If we want to learn the words of the musicians, we'll go and learn them and we'll pay a lot of money to sit in their concerts and sing their words back to them as if they can hear us. Because we know that they might like that. And then they travel down the road to somewhere to Hamilton or Ottawa or down to the States and then they do the exact same thing. And the exact same thing. And the exact same thing. And we have no problem with learning their words. But what about the weight of these words? When Allah says that these are the most beloved words to me, does that mean anything to us? That when Allah likes to hear it, how much of it do we say? Now we know the best speech revealed is the book of Allah. We know that. But these are the most beloved words to Allah. Subhanallah. When you say Subhanallah, you say that this is the, you're recognizing the complete perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That his perfection is beyond perception, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you say that, out of everything that he created, that he is above his creation perfectly. And this can be summarized when we say subhanallah. So how many times are we saying subhanallah throughout the day? That this is a beloved word to Allah Jalla wa ala. Alhamdulillah, the believer's issue is a strange one, ajaba. Because no matter what happens to us, we still say, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and do we know the weight of that? When, when we say in the Fatiha, and I told you this several times, after we say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah replies to us, Hamadani Abdi, my servant has praised me, Akhi. How much do you think Allah loves you if this is easy for you to say? Alhamdulillah. Wala ilaha illallah, that out of everything that the people worship, out of all the created things that they worship, whether it be people, whether it be trees, whether it be stones, whether it be whatever it may be, that we say without apology and without any compromise, no sellout, no anything, we say that there is absolutely nothing worthy of worship out of everything that the people worship. When we say La ilaha illallah, we say that none of it has the right except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we actually say this? with authority in ourselves. La ilaha illallah. Wallahu akbar. And out of everything that you're going through, whatever the problems may be, whatever the issues may be, that Allah is greater. Whatever the issues that your family is going through, that Allah is greater. Whatever the issues that the ummah is going through, Allah Ta'ala is greater and greatest. We say Allahu akbar. These are the most beloved words to Allah. And how often do we say that? Number two, Muhammad Sallallahu said, and I'm paraphrasing, and I quote, it is better for me to say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah, Wallahu Akbar, better than what? Talat al Shams. Better than whatever the sun has risen upon. He think about this place, think about this dunya, and the wonders and beauties that are here. 
And it's not a bad place. There are incredible things that Allah has created here. Incredible sights and incredible wonders. Good people, mashallah, that worship Allah, that are trying their best to purify their souls, trying their best to benefit the ummah, benefit themselves before they reach their Lord. Beautiful things in this ummah. Hajj. Beautiful. Ramadan's coming. May Allah allow us to reach that. But these words, akhi, these phrases, are better than all that the sun has risen upon. As Muhammad Sallallahu said. And you get to say them. You are called every day to say these words. These phrases are for all places. Akhi. All phases. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. Better than <clears throat> whatever the sun has risen upon. People go to great lengths to please their bosses. <laughs> and please their societies. And please everyone else. But when you think of how easy it is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these words. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. Better than anything that the sun has risen upon. So number one, I said, the most beloved words to Allah. Number two, the be better than anything that the sun has risen upon. Number three, Ahi, protection. Protection from what? <laughs> protection from invaders who come to invade our countries. Protection from all of these things. But most importantly, Ahi, protection from the hellfire. Do you know that the hellfire is 70 times hotter than the hottest fire of here? You know, if you cook and you happen to touch your grill or your air fryer and you immediately, almost immediately pull your hand away and it leaves a blister, a little blister. Sometimes you see a blister right here. I know I like to grill a lot and if I touch the grill, I get a blister right here and it might last for a week and think to myself, you're not ready for the hellfire of house. You are not ready for that. None of us in here are ready for the hellfire. None of us are ready for the heat that comes from that hellfire. But the protection from that, Akhi, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Distances the people from the hellfire. And the more you say it, the further away you get from it. So insha'Allah Jalla wa'ala, we start saying these words because that is ultimately the protection that we need. The protection from the hellfire who gets to breathe once a year, twice a year, once when it's very cold, and once when it is very hot, and we ask Allah to protect us from that. These phrases help us with that. So the first one is number one, of course, we know it's the most beloved words to Allah Jalla wa Number two, better than what the sun has risen upon. Number three, protection from the hell fire. And all of us need all three of that. Number four, Akhin Jannah. If I tell you that there are going to be trees in the Jannah, you would have to believe that. Muhammad said it. Allah has referred to trees in the Jannah, fruit trees and different things like that. But now we get really caught up in things that we can see and things that we know about. And I wanted to just make this a, a thing. And I want you to know, understand that <clears throat> you'll never understand a place until you're actually in that place. And even that regards to even here. If I had an idea that I wanted to call my brother Ihab and I wanted to build a place in Egypt. And I told my brother, we sat together and I said, I want to build a place in this specific part of Egypt. And he, you know, he confers with me and we come up with a plan. And I'm going to build a place in Egypt. And the place starts to build and the brothers start to send me pictures. So you open your phone and you scroll through and you say, Wow, mashallah, they're really building the place nice. But you've never been there. Well, pictures aren't enough. I want to hear audio, brother. Send me some movies. Send me some videos. So the brothers from Egypt, they send me some videos and I'm looking through the videos and listening to the construction workers talking. All these different things that they're saying to each other, doing their work, but I'm still not there. I have to believe them. I have to believe Ihab when he says, Ahi, the work is being done. But that's not enough. I send him there. And I send Ihab there. 
and he goes all the way, mashallah, first class, because it's my, it's my story and I can fly him any way I want. First class, all the way to Egypt, Jazakallah khair. And what does he do? He sends me back more videos and more photos. I will never understand that place in Egypt until I get there. And that's likewise your place in Jannah. Allah is telling you that these are trees that are planted in the Jannah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met with Ibrahim. How? We don't know. We just know that it's a miracle of Allah during the Isra and Mi'raj that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was allowed to meet with Ibrahim, his grandfather. Great, 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 great grandfather. Allah knows how many. And what did he say? He said, give my salam to your ummah. Wa alayka salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all. Second of all, he said, that Jannah is beautiful. Its water is pure and its land is spread out. And when you say these words, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, that trees are planted in the Jannah. Trees, akhi, are You don't know what they look like, but you know that the most truthful of all that is truthful said it to you. Allah Ta'ala never lies. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi has known to be telling you the truth, so we plant them here and we harvest them there. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, yaqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa nas'anullah ta'ala tawfiqin wa sadat. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Next one is that these deeds, these words, these phrases are heavy on your scale, judgment, judgment day. That they are heavy on your scale, yet light on the tongue. سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله الله أكبر. Those days you're going to need. That day, I should say, you're going to need something that is heavy on your scale. These phrases for all places and all phases are able to do that. Allah has put power in these words when we say them. They are heavy on the scale, yet light on the tongue. They also obliterate the minor sins and we add one. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ So, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah, the fifth one, and we say that because it is one of the treasures, the keys of Jannah. And they obliterate the minor sins. So any minor sin that you've done, yaqi, ukhti, my sister, my brother, if you want that gone, then you keep saying those things. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, wala ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. But that's not all. Have you ever asked? Your brother to pray for you? Have you ever asked him to do that? We always ask our brothers, I need your dua. I need your dua. I'm asking you right now. Everybody in here need to make dua for each other. May Allah forgive us and have mercy on us. But did you know? Now, did you know? When you say these words, these boring little words, as the people say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, that day according to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Take the form of a nahad, of bees. Bees that fly up, not to the top of the building, not to the clouds, not to the top of the atmosphere of the world. These bees, according to the Prophet wasallam, fly up and swarm around the throne of Allah and mention the one who sent them. Would you like your name, Akhi? to be mentioned in the throne of Allah. Your name might not even get mentioned in your own house. <laughs> but when you say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, you're planting trees in the Jannah, sending bees to the throne of Allah, getting protection from the hellfire. You're saying words that Allah has, has, has said that He loves. And you're saying words that will, will get you closer to the one who is, who is a samad, who everyone is trying to get close to, and may Allah allow us all to get closer to Him. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallu wa anna nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu wa alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa baraka ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim 
في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إننا أسألك قبل الموت توبة وعند الموت شهادة وبعد الموت جنة نعيما وحريرا وملكا كبيرا سبحان الله عدد ما خلق الحمد لله عدد ما خلق ولا إله إلا الله عدد ما خلق الله أكبر عدد ما خلق May Allah allow us all to get closer to him with these phrases May Allah allow us to benefit from them tremendously because we are the ones who are in need of them Allah has already proclaimed his greatness, his perfection and that there is nothing worthy of worship but him when we say these words, we acknowledge that. May Allah forgive each and every one of us of our sins.